Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. I really hope you all enjoyed this video. Um, so this thing here is a butcher's hook or a meat hook, if you will. Um, you know, they, they get called a couple different things, but basically it's just a sharp pointy hook. And you know, when I look at it, it's like Captain Hook's hook, R. <laughs> um, but uh, basically, um, what did I, why? That's the first question, right? Why on earth am I making such a thing? So again, this is going in conjunction with another, um, if you guys hadn't seen the video yet, I made a gambrel. I'll leave that linked up down in the description. I'll also put it somewhere up here. Uh, I made a gambrel for a farmer and you know, that needs to butcher up some beef cows. And so he also needed a butcher's hook or a meat hook. Now, what is this used for, you might ask? Well, sometimes when you have an animal hanging up that you need to dress out, sometimes you need to lift stuff. Animals are really heavy, especially when you're talking about cattle. Um, sometimes you need a little extra help to lift an extra arm up off the ground um, or a side of beef or something like that uh, to hang out of the way that's not connected by the hawks on the gambrel itself. Uh, so you do need extra uh, extra things like this to be pulled from opposite directions to lift stuff. So that's what it is. It's built fairly hefty. There's a lot of ways of going about making this same item here. And you do it a lot of different ways. A lot of old ones were just a piece of wrought iron that was drawn out, just lapped around and made an eye weld there just so it has an eye on the end and the other end drawn out and turned into a hook. Um, you see them in different shapes. Some of them are more round. They got more of a circular shape to them. Uh, at any rate, they all need to have a fairly tight radius in here because what you want them to do is you want to be able to slip in and then wherever you're pulling them from, they not slip off the hook. So you don't want to have a shallow hook on this. You don't want nothing to fall off while you're working or processing the animal. Um, that's one thing to keep in mind. As far as the materials goes, this is again, some of that same five eighths inch, uh, uh, hexagon bar stock that I had. Uh, people, I had questions in the last video like, where the heck do you find hex? Good question. I got it at a scrapyard once and it's just been sitting on the shelf forever. It's not any particularly good steel, it's just mild. So it's not, uh, it's not like high carbon or nothing. Uh, it's just a mild steel of some kind that somebody had in hex. It was probably like a machining type stock. So. Hopefully that'll answer some of the questions. How big is this eye? It's about an inch in diameter, the eye is here. Uh, just leaving enough space for a different uh, type of chain hoist hook might be able to slip through there. Um, I'm gonna get asked a question, I know it already. Why did I leave this? Purely ornamental. There's nothing, there's nothing of value to this. I could have whopped that off. Uh, I just think it's kind of neat uh, to see that profile of that you know, slit and drift that I did through there. So I just left that on there, um, you know, for what it is. Also, you might notice that the hook is bent in line with the eye here versus going like this around this side of it. That is done for a specific reason. If you make it this way around, you really got to hook back because this can swing and then drop your, again, your animal off of there versus this is not going to swing as much when it's pulled under tension on a chain link or something like that, it'll have a limit that it can't go past. Um, if you put it in line like this, it can swing full, fully like so, uh, and then end up dropping your meat off of there. So that's why it's bent in the direction of the eye um, for this particular butcher soak. So that's it for today. Oh, let me answer one more question. I've been asked about finishes. Finish work. On your finish work, this can be coated in vegetable oil or whatever. These particular ones, I'm leaving raw. I, you know, I don't know what they want touching their meat, so not doing anything to it as far as a finish work is concerned. Um, you can put it with all your regular stuff, just vegetable oil or um, season it like cast iron, basically. In most, in most cases, the tallow, the fat of a particular animal being worked up will be enough. This thing will get kind of greasy over time and it'll just kind of get protected all on its own without you having to do a whole heck of a lot uh, to stop it from rusting, especially if you're using it a lot. This is gonna get stored, obviously. It needs to have like some sort of baked on type finish or wax is a, is a good thing uh, for that. So 
that's it for today. Thank you all so much for watching this video. You can drop your comments down in the comment section down below um, and questions you may have. If I don't answer them in the comment section, I'll try to respond to them in another video when we make other cool things. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you to all my great channel members who make this content possible. Really couldn't do it without you all. Uh, again, God bless each and every last one of you, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you so much for watching.